scene is set for Zooster City. Chunk is delivering some news, uh, some current events, and also a uh, TV to Malik, um, who is a rather reclusive member of the uh, Knight community. But Chunk said idly before he'd get him a TV, and being quite bored at the time, and as busy as he is right now, went to somewhat extreme lengths to st- save off his boredom, and uh, Malik's going to benefit from him like a bastard. So Chunk will have um, sent word ahead of him, and he'll drive the van up to near the... Uh, if there's a gate that can be opened, he'll drive the van into the uh, into the graveyard, and he'll go near um, Malik's mausoleum, assuming Malik has something keeping an eye out, whether it be ghouls, um, spirits, or other things. And he'll basically he'll sit out, he'll sit outside the van, stand outside the van, waiting for. Malik to approach, because it is Malik's territory. As the van is pulled up and Chunk exits the van, likely letting it raise up about four or five inches off the ground, a bit more than it already was, the mausoleum's heavy stone door remains inert for a few minutes before finally sliding open and grinding as the large stone slab opens outward, pushed by Nothing. At least nothing visible. And soon after, the sound of crackling, the sound of groaning, the sound of footsteps coming up a soggy stairway can be heard as about five animated corpses just make their way to the back of the van and stand there, staring blankly, swaying ever so slightly. Chuck will just wait for Malik to show up. Because just looking at the zombies right now, he's kind of looking at the, the zombies with a degree of curiosity. They just stand there, and they seem to be waiting for a cue for him. My name is Bishop Chunk. I'm here to speak with Malik. Just in case, I don't know if you're. He's kind of looking and peering into their eyes, and kind of like, I don't know, maybe he can see through them or something. I don't know. That'd be pretty fucking sweet, actually. Um, yeah, I know, got a uh, TV, but yeah, it's a little bit complicated to set up. I can't do the surround sound right now, but I got a decent chair for two. And I got one some. Of the, one of the decayed hands will just simply, sort of, decrepitly make its way up and just start tapping the back of the. Van. Okay, he'll open it and he'll gently slide the rather flat box uh, to very large to let the zombie be able to grasp it. Two go on either side, while if the fifth, uh, or either two on each side, um, and then the fifth goes on the end to help guide it, and they just very blankly begin to carry the TV downstairs, like animated broomsticks from some wonderful nostalgic film. Chunk will uh, lift up the chair, which has a surround sound system, like a, bo- a heavy box or sound system. It's covered in, like, wrapping paper, uh, like, well, not, like, a gift, but like a cling film kind of type stuff, and he's just lifting it up with his rather large head. Probably actually still love buffing that a bit, and he follows after them. Because um, he assumes this is what he's supposed to be doing. He walks down. When he comes down into the crypt, what he'll see is essentially the mausoleum's floor had long ago been taken away with a, maybe a jackhammer or something of that nature, and actually a old archaic looking stairwell that had probably been there for many years before Zeuster became the metropolis it is is what he'll see and as he walks down it is an old style crypt with graves dug into the walls and piles of bones set around there's a large stone altar 
in the center of the room, and there are smaller chambers uh, off to the side. It's not a massive complex by any stretch of the imagination, but it is large enough that it has several smaller rooms, in a manner of speaking, uh, built into it. And it's all lit by... Some of it is lit by candlelight, others bits of it are lit by battery-powered LEDs. And sitting off into one of the chambers is Malik sitting on the half-fallen-apart chair that looks like it's been down there since the 70s. And a old large box style TV which is currently not on and Malik will simply stand and turn and look towards Bishop Chunk. Chunk will kind of look at the TV and go, oh my god, you were working with that? Okay, okay, actually, serious business first. I can't set up the surround sound right now, but uh, I just want to come by and give you a warning. Um, some of the guys went dog tagging last night, and apparently, apparently the local doggies are a little bit upset. So, if you see any wolves or things um, creeping around, maybe just be a little bit more on guard than normal. Uh, do I look like the kind of guy that goes walking around all that much? Yeah, but if they start sniffing around, you know what I mean. Nah. I'll keep it under advisement. There's more than one way to get out of this little box I have for myself. Mm, fair enough, fair enough. Chunkle, Chunkle unwrap the seat. Um, anyways, this is a lazy boy. You will find it is filled with many levers and things which you may explore to your increased pleasure as a viewer. Now, he'll start carefully unboxing the rather large TV. Alex is just going to actually quirk a brow as he kind of shambles over to the box. What's that? A TV? No, it's not. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, it's that. Is that there? Is a horse That's and buggy. This, this, my friend. This, my friends, is top line Formula One car, race car. There is little between these two things, but I assure you, this is a, one of the pinnacles of modern TV that a consumer could easily get their hands on. Well, I guess just going to look the device over. It's so thin, though. I don't get it. Ah, uh, you don't have to get it. All you have to do, this chunk rattles on, say, but um, I'm going to give it a roll, see how technology intelligence comes along. So, yeah, that's still pretty good. Chunks probably looked over the manual at some point. Um, in the meantime, it's like, that's our same. Now, I can't stop the surround sound right now. We'll just leave it on the box over in the corner. What's um, the but, surround sound? Okay, what, um, what shows do you like to watch? <clears throat> Price is right. Okay, you know the way those things are filmed in front of like, a live studio audience? Mm-hmm. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to sit in the middle of the studio audience and you can hear, you know, the sound? Like you were sitting right in the studio. The speakers are placed around the room. So it's almost like if you close your eyes, you can imagine you were there. Now you won't have the people beside you, that kind of thing, but it just, you know, it, it makes the whole experience more immersive. Chunk is kind of fiddling with wires with a very amount, or more amount of skill than you'd expect him to. If Chuck cares to notice, he'll see that all of the um, shamblers have yellow price tags as name tags on their chests. Oh my god. <laughs> now, I, after a little while, Chuck's you quiet, kind of uh, doing different things. Now, I got a guy looking for, but taking a quick break, had to deal with some business, just will come back here. But um, mm. there's a guy who might come under blood hunt in a bit, but right now he's not. He's. He's still truly bad. You know, hoping I can talk the fucker down, tying himself in. Uh, probably still going to get himself killed, even if he does have himself in. But hey, best guy he's got. And Chunk's just going to finish after a while setting up the TV. He goes, now, let me just... He'll start fiddling with the remote. And actually, when he's fiddling with the remote, he gets something he's like, oh, you probably haven't... This is a remote control. You've probably seen him on the stuff. You won't have to get up or... Well, you probably have one of your guys changing talent and stuff before. 
plus um, he'll start showing you how to record the programs <laughs> using the remote. And he'll just start he'll just start describing a few different things and then he'll 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 put it on and just flick it on. Let's say the big bang theory is on it. Watch for Malik's reaction just to with the huge T V in color that is so highly defined. You need these aspects to truly appreciate it. <laughs> Malik pauses for a moment. And he simply just looks at the screen. His milky eyes just opening wider. Perhaps a bit of blood is spent to make them a bit more clear, to give himself a little bit more vibrance. As he looks up, and his mouth doesn't fall agape, but he just silently makes his way over to the chair and sits down and just starts washing, saying nothing. And he seems to be contemplating. And Chunk will then notice just a very small red trickle come out of his left eye. Now, Shadow, I know you guys are generally pretty old. Um... You might want to ease yourself and be careful. Maybe not watch like Discovery or anything, because I don't. I don't know how you like. It's you know. It's only been a you know. It's been a relatively short time compared to yourself since I've seen the sun. But yeah, you, you, it might be a bit weird seeing that you probably haven't seen it in color for a very very long time. So maybe ease yourself in with a bit. Uh, depending on what you're watching. You know, indoor shows like look at big they're indoors here, but you know. Sun rising and staying over to Serengeti might be a bit fucky with the head, or it might be pretty cool. It's like I can see them, and they're all right here in the room with me. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the immersion, and technology's only getting better. Um, you know, it's a couple of couple of decades. They're talking about smellivision. I mean, they've been talking about it a while, but they're they're getting there. They're getting there. It's, it's very nicky, but you gotta smell it. Just another layer of immersion. Now, this, this around sounds easy stuff. Now, this one, you see, we've got a function here, and he kind of presses remote. Now, put these on. This is called 3D. <laughs> Malik will just look at the glasses. As appropriate. Like, and then puts them on. <laughs> now, you got to stay pretty still, but, you know, it works. See the way it looks like it's popping out a little bit? Mal or you know what I'm gonna roll just a fate dice here to see what kind of show that Chunk puts on. Not something but like Serengetis and Sunrise and Sunsets. <laughs> um Bishop Chunk puts on a puts on one of the cable stations and it comes to the Fast and the Furious. A race scene at night, and as one of the cars comes it uh, towards the screen, Malik literally almost tumbles over the back of the chair. Easy, easy, easy. You look like you'll stay in the chair. Now, now, what you want to do is Chunk will slowly pull the lever to let things start reclining back and the feet be kind of elevated. Yes, this is watching TV in luxury. He'll just look up and take the remote, <laughs> look it over a few times, and start pressing the CH button. As he figures that probably means channel. Yeah, Chunk will give him a few tips and a few things. Now, actually, there's one of the other things I want to warn you. I probably wouldn't call by tonight, except for I was in the neighborhood and wanted to warn you about those, but about the doggies. Um, but uh, I want to ask you if you consider teaching me. Um, you got like necromancy and the ghost and stuff. Um, if you want training in like Protean or Obtenebration or you know stuff like that in return, there's a certain process that you have to go through before I'll teach you the black arts. You understand? Process is enlighten me somewhat. The dark arts require a sound mind, a mind that understands death in all of its facets. Generally, I like to 
only teach it to those on the path of death and soul. Uh, I'm a, a little bit late in that one. I'm, uh, I'm already rocking on a black horde, and um, it wasn't easy getting there. And uh, I have no intentions of um, jumping ship. If exemplary, if exemplary members of the Sabbat make themselves useful to the Harbingers as a whole, <clears throat> it is sometimes sanctioned that they can be taught the Dark Arts. After all, with clans out there like the Giovanni and the Tremere, never hurts to have a leg up on the competition for the sort of cane as a whole. Okay, how would one go about this? Prove yourself an indispensable member of the sect. I've been embraced for less than half a year and I'm a bishop. Hmm. Just gonna drop that one in there. Bishop, that is something. Perhaps you can come back in a few weeks' time. Make your way down here. And I'll... Why don't you do a little bit of independent study on death? <sighs> Find out its facets, both folklore <clears throat> and academic. Then maybe after that, I'll start showing you some of the more occult tomes, some of the things that are a bit more tangible. And then you've proven that you're intellectually on the level. I'll contact my superiors and see what we can do. Fair enough. I assure you, Tears, when it comes to me, there's more to meet the eye. But I'll leave you to harsh such things and um, get back to your kind of look towards the other doors which are closed wondering what's behind them back to your work and uh, well your relaxation depending on what you want to do I've got my own duties to attend to but I'll certainly start digging around and Chunk will start heading towards the exit uh, as he walks by one of the doors he'll actually hear uh, soft whimpers and sobs on the other side of various people of various genders of various ages and the sound of chains rattling as they hear something walk by the door. Chunk, if this had been a few weeks ago, would have given more concern to that. However, now that he's on honorable cord, pick up horror is just rampant meaningless, meaningless killing. However, Harbinger Skull obviously works with the dead and does experiments, so there is some point to it. He does not recognize what others recognize points, but he can understand that part. So he's well, he's go to it for a moment, but he continues onwards, not really overly concerned. A marked difference on what would have been a very different reaction some time ago. Heads on out. Malik will just simply sit back and just snap his finger once as he switches over to the game show network and the name tagged shamblers make their way to his side to sit there as a lovely studio audience. And every time that something amazing happens, the shamblers clap their hands in a rather odd and somewhat decrepit cacophony. And I think there we can end our scene.